Hey everyone, it's Christopher Swan, and welcome to this week's episode of Living Your Journey. Each week, I get the amazing opportunity to chat with people that love what they do in life. They understand their passions. Maybe it's a career path or the social impact that they're making. It's kind of like they're following their North Star. They also know their story may change, but they understand that they're on their journey every day. This week, I sat down with Vincent Greenheight, or as known to his fans as Not Bad. That's not with a K. Vincent recently started his company, Not Bad, where he crochets small stuffed characters in the style of Amy Gurumi. That's the Japanese art of knitting or crocheting small, cute stuffed animals and creatures. Think anime and Pokemon. So admittedly, I really knew nothing about this world of Amy Gurumi, but it's big. The fascinating story here, Vincent shares how he found crochet and why it makes sense for him. And he must be doing something right because he's already gained thousands of followers. Even better, Vincent recently started a charity drive with his friend and fellow crocheter, Jessica Carey, aka The Hook Nook, to have their fans create stuffed characters and beanies for hospitalized children. Vincent's amazing and so genuine. Within minutes of chatting, we had already become friends. Seriously, no joke. And I think you're gonna feel the same way. Everyone, meet Vincent. Vincent, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here. Hi, Christopher. Thank you for having me. I mean, this is this is exciting. <laughs> First time on a podcast, so I'm stoked. That's awesome. I love that. I think this is... No, it's not the first time I've had that, like somebody who was just the first time on a show, but I think it might be like the first time somebody who's so um, influential online, who's had such scale online is maybe their first time. So it's, it's exciting for me. I love that you're excited. I think we're having a great conversation. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Yeah. I woke up super early for this. So (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome. Um, So, okay. I'm going to jump in a little bit. Um, Well, first I'll say, you know, you know this. We talked earlier that, you know, clearly I have been stalking you online and doing a little snooping to find out more about kind of what you do and where you've done it. Mm-hmm. I've I known your stuff for a few weeks because, you know, we've had somebody who's kind of pointing me in the right direction and said, oh, you should really check out Vincent. And so mm-hmm. I've had a lot of time, uh, you know, kind of exploring and learning about the work you're doing, um, which is kind of a new space for me. So this is where I want to jump in. I want you to describe for us the work that you're doing, specifically um, the specific crochet in the style of crochet you're doing. What is it? Um, so, uh, where do I even start with this? Um, so, cro- it's like still the same thing. It's still crochet, obviously, the same principle is there. But my style of crochet is called emigurumi, and it's this Japanese art style where you work in pretty much circles and you just you pretty much just sew things together and make a little unique doll. So pretty much I make knitted, do- or not knitted, uh, I make stuffed dolls. Mm-hmm. Is I mean, it's it's hard to explain when you can't visually see it, but yeah, so, and the my, my expertise, or what I like to f- specifically focus on is I'm a huge Pokemon fanatic. So I like to recreate Pokemon and bring them to life. And I like to do other little animals and stuff, but yeah, so I like to make little figures. And I, I don't so much do the scarves and beanies or anything just because, for some reason, I struggle with that. But mm. when it comes to doll ma- when it comes to doll making, the idea comes right to my head. Is and- it is it also a blend of like because when I looked at your stuff, but I've also looked at others and I've researched it. It looks like it's really the like it's Japanese anime blent into like crochet. Is that kind of the, right. the idea? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it doesn't have to be anime oriented, but I've noticed that if you I've noticed Amy Garumi artists excel when they're into like nerdy, uh, nerdy things and like anime and because there's just so many characters that you can recreate and, you know, people have like a, people see these characters and they're kind of nostalgic about it. Mm. And I mean, it's not so much nostalgia for me because I'm still such a diehard at 21. I've been playing since I was like five. (laughs) (laughs) So it's always been there. But I mean, I do other things like if you like anime wise, I like if you've heard of like my neighbor Totoro. And uh, if you like, if you're into Disney, I've done Baymaxes and stuff. So I, I try to like experiment outside of just Pokemon because I know other people like to see other things. I've done animals too, but yeah, like you just said, it's pretty much, pretty much just like the doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I know you've done some other stuff too because I even noticed. I think you did a BB-8. Is that right? I did. I did. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. It's people. 
if you see them how other people's art online, there's there's different ways of going about it. Some people make it super detailed and like really big and stuff, but I go for uh, the the chibi look. It's like kind of if you know what chibi is, it's kind of like the cute squishy look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they're not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think there's a big following for that too, because you can even see that in mainstream stuff. Maybe not specifically crocheted, but even in the form of things. We had an artist on our show um, who does all these like cute and small, adorable characters, and a lot for Disney. And I, I, it's almost like it's his illustrated version of that. So I could see that, and he's super popular with his work. Right, right, and you know it. It definitely helped me when Pokemon Go became a phenomenon because it just, you know, brought Pokemon back into the spotlight. Mm. And then <laughs> here I am already making these little Pokemon reenactment dolls. <laughs> right. Hey, I want to talk about, so, a little bit about the crochet piece, too. So, you know, if, if people can go back and they can see a YouTube video of how you can uh, describe the entire story of how you got into crochet and, or how this all started with your company, um, Not Bad. By the way, clever name. So I so that was cute. But <laughs> Thank you. you have seemed to be, when I listen to your story, you seem to be fascinated with crochet for such a long time, you know, and there's many times that you, you started or you tried and you failed and you, and you went through these. And what I'm curious about is why crochet? Like what about that speaks to you specifically? You know, I, I had a feeling I would get asked this and I was like, in the shower the other day, I was like t- trying to think to myself, how am I going to answer this question? Because I've been asked it before. And to be honest, I I cannot even come up with an answer for myself either. I don't know. I just, like like you said, and if people don't know, I have attempt- I've been wanting to do it since. Well, I was fascinated with yarn in like middle school when you can make these little like, um, like uh, pieces of art where you like stab the cardboard with like a needle and sure. there's a bunch of needles. It's, it's like connect the dots with yarn. <laughs> sure. And that, that, I don't know, doing that was so vivid to me. And I remember in high school, there was someone that crocheted and my friend's mom had brought it up just like, you know, left field. And it was nothing, it wasn't like a significant conversation at all, but it had stuck with me for just, I don't, I don't know what it was. There's just like some internal thing inside of me that has always wanted to do crochet. I, it, I can't explain it. <laughs> it I, I want to say it's like, I feel like it's my destiny, but I know that's kind of like, you know, kind of cliche to say, but <laughs> yeah. It, is it a little but bit, I, of, is it a little bit of the creative element that you like? I mean, you can be creative in many different ways. And there's a lot of different mediums, but is, is that part of the, like wanting to be creative or wanting to create things? Oh, if it's, well, I mean, like, why do I like crochet? Yeah, I just, you know, because I think about the crochet, part of the crocheting or the outcome of it is you actually create things or you get to visualize things, you get to bring things to life. Like Pokemon, it's a two-dimensional character, right? And Mm -hmm. you're now taking it to this like full 3D world. So I'm wondering if maybe it's not just crochet, but are, are you driven by creating things or being creative? Yes, yes. Uh, I remember uh, I, I was always so fascinated with artists on like, I don't, I don't ever understand how artists' minds work. Like, I'm just like, how do you, how do you think of something in your head and you are able to replicate it? Like drawing and everything. I've just never been very, I've never been able to put my ideas. Uh, I've never been able to create my ideas in any type of sense, like drawing, painting, blah, blah, blah. And then when it comes to crochet, I don't know. Once I, I, I'm able to just think of it in my head and mm. put it, like, you know, create it. And I think that's what really drives me is the fact that I have an outlet that I'm actually not horrible and I'm not bad at. <laughs> and so I, yeah, I think that's what really drives me. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, when I think about it, I get kind of overwhelmed in my head just because of how like incredible it is. Yeah. Um, it, it, but yeah, there's something about it. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say it, it actually just sounds like it's so funny how you just describe artists like you, you know, like how they just think of this thing and they could just put it down. I don't understand how their brains work. You just described your brain as you crocheted. So it's almost like, oh, you just needed to find your medium. I find that fascinating. Right. I, and probably makes sense because, it, you know, you may be interested in one thing. We just interviewed um, an, an caustic artist, which was a new world for me. And I didn't quite understand that kind of art. I know I was fascinated by it. And she has done multiple things. She's done different kind of mediums. And she's like, they were all fun. But when I hit encaustic, she's like, it just like, I had my aha moment of like, oh, so this is the kind of art I'm supposed to be doing. Not, 
Like, <laughs> like painting was fun, drawing, was, eh. and she was like, but now I get to work with this wax and this, then, and then she was like fire and it was amazing. So I just, I'm wondering if that's a little bit like maybe your scenario as well. Like you finally hit the thing that yeah, kind of spoke to you. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. I remember because I, I never, I didn't even know what Amy Gurumi was when I, when I, when I attempted to do crochet. I didn't know what Amy Gurumi was, and I remember when I felt like the last, like my fifth time, was it my fourth or fourth or fifth time, like actually doing it, which was the time I actually like was able to do it. I, I had Googled crochet and like I saw like the Pokemon Amy Gurumi, and I was like, oh my god, there's, there's a thing for this, <laughs> and and then that was kind of like my aha moment. I was like, this is it. This is like this is what I want to do. Yeah. And then in my YouTube video, I said I, I did the three granny squares, and I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. I I want to hop into this whole Amy Gurumi thing. Made my first Squirtle, and from then on, I knew this was like this was it. Yeah, it sounds like it just speaks to you with the because that was going to be actually one of my questions. Why why Amy Gurumi? And that that sounds like it's because it's. Yeah, it plays into all the stuff that you love, right? All, you can, um, like you said, you Pokemon since you were five or video games and that sort of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. when and, you, and it's, it's for, oh, you go ahead. Oh, I was, you know, I was, I'll let you finish that thought because I'm going to ask you a new question. Okay. Um, I was just going to say that uh, it, well, I mean, it just like the creative, like product is really nice, but also just the, the journey to make the product, like mm. crocheting this, the act itself is just super nice for me. And it's therapeutic and it's, it's just something different to do with my hands. Cause my hands are so fidgety. Mm. And, That's a good point. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So you have this aha, you, it all kind of clicks for you. It feels good. You, you like where you're doing it. So, you know, anybody could do this as a hobby. Anybody could do whatever, you know, but you take it a step further. And so you start this online business with crochet, you, you know, you create all these uh, social accounts, you have an online business on Etsy, and you're selling <laughs> patterns as well. Um, so, you know, why start the online business? Was that was that part of the, hey, I, I'm really looking for something to not just love, but love to do in for career? Um, no, no, that not everything I have done has, none of it has been planned <laughs> whatsoever. It's, which is, which is awesome. Like, that's a good thing. It's been so organic. Yeah. Um, I had, well, cause I had just, when I started, I was kind of in a weird place in my life. Like I had just quit my job and I had just like moved from where I was at school and I was like, well, I don't really know what to do with my life now. So I guess I'll, uh, and that was like the only thing that really had sparked my, my fascination so i had done a big project i'd had done like the i had done four pokemon and i was really proud of them and everything and my dad i had shown my parents and everything my dad's like oh my god i could like really show these to um i had shown these to i could show these to my kids and like maybe you could like get some sales i'm like yeah that'd be really awesome but you know i was only so confident in my skills at that point Mm, yeah and we had we had taken a picture and we put it on facebook and then i don't know why i had the idea but my my friends were into photography my my friend had just picked up a camera and I don't know what went through my head to think oh you know it could be kind of fun to go into nature or public areas and put these in put these in like scenarios and take a picture and put it on the internet and then I did that for a little bit and then it just somehow picked up speed because not a lot of people were I don't think really anyone was really doing that and um and then I had people saying oh do you sell these blah blah and you know, I said yes, but with hesitation, just because I, I, like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't confident in my ability just quite yet to like charge people money. Yeah. But with, with people saying that, I was like, yeah, I mean, that's eventually what I want to do. So to answer your question, I mean, I, I initially, no, I, it wasn't making this a business wasn't the f- first idea, but I mean, which is, it's weird. I say that because I didn't want to sell my Amy Garumi right away, but one of the times in high school when I wanted to learn how to crochet, the idea was to start a business, like a get rich quick type of business. Like just to sell beanies. And <laughs> I stuff, love that is, um, crochet was your idea to get rich quick. <laughs> Cause I'm not, I, I know. I know. I'm not sure that's not uh, rich. Pra- <laughs> that's not like rich. <laughs> Very quickly. Yeah, it's not like a practical way to make money. It's not like you just get rich making crochet. And <laughs> you know those billionaire know. crochet people. You know they're everywhere. <laughs> but I, I love yeah. that. I actually kind of really love that it wasn't. Like, sure, maybe you thought that in high school, but then as you got a little bit older, it was just, it's, it's just sparked a passion. 
And that feels a little bit more natural. Like you just happen to be following the things that you love. Right. Yeah. And I think what made it different than high school compared to out of high school when I like learned Amigurumi is when I kept trying like my third time when I really wanted to learn, it's because I was like, well, I really want to make money off of this, which probably, which to me isn't the right way to start like a passion. I don't, I don't, that's not the reason why I would want to do this is for the money. Yeah. But then when I started Amigurumi, like the money wasn't in my head whatsoever. It was purely for pleasure and to like, get my creative self out there. And it was just to like express myself or just to do something new and challenge myself. Yeah. That's great. And so we, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> you also mentioned, um, and, and the same YouTube video that I referred to earlier too, that I, I really like this part that, and you even mentioned like, it's kind of cliche, which yeah, sure. But it's, there's some truth to it. You said, like, I'm the only one stopping myself from learning how to do this because you, you I, I like that how you were sort of transparent. Like, yeah, I kind of failed multiple times. I couldn't figure it out. I watched YouTube videos finally. Oh, so many times. Right? So many times. <laughs> but I kind of love that because it's real. Like, it doesn't mean you have to be some natural all the time. But, you know, you, you, you do say that, you know, I'm the only one stopping myself, you know, get out of my own way and just do it. You mentioned in that same YouTube video that I referred to earlier about, um, you know, you were the only one stopping yourself. And you even mentioned it was cliche and like, and sure, maybe it is, but it's really true. Like we can get in our own way of um, succeeding. And that's what was stopping you really from really pushing forward to, to learn how to crochet. And, you know, what I, what I always think is interesting about that is over the last year, you've been doing quite a bit of stuff. You've got a lot more followers. I'm assuming you're probably a little bit more confident in your work now. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> so that it's kind of a, it's a great lesson that you kind of learned through just getting started as over the last year with your growth of followers and with the work that you're doing, has that kind of applied in other places? Have you noticed like, oh yeah, I just got to keep going or, or has any of that transpired anywhere else? It, it has definitely made me feel more confident in everything else I've been doing. Just And it, it's really opened up a lot of doors for me, such as uh, I'm able to, as many of you see, I'm, I'm able to run a charity on like a quite a larger scale than I, w- than I would have been able to if I had just started. You know, I have a lot more eyes on me, which can be, which to me is, I'm, I'm just so grateful for. I think it's awesome having an audience for all my work like that that really does motivate me. Like, yay, people get to see what I'm making. Like people are excited to see what I do and how I, you know, reenact it in my pictures, which it, that, that really drives me. Cause I, I have so much fun with the pictures. Like people are like, Oh my God, you're, you're so like, I think people think I'm crazy and stuff for like how I portray, <laughs> my, tr- portray myself on the internet. And like, they're like, Oh, you just like don't care. But I mean, I do care. I, I, I put a lot of thought and effort into my pictures. This, I, I, it almost sounds like that your confidence not has almost been boosted just by even that simple lesson of like get out of your own way, like st- stop stopping yourself. It's like now you're really pushing forward even further. Is is that true, or have you always been confident? Um, uh, I, I wouldn't say I've always been. I, I've never felt like completely confident just because I've never had like a thing mm. before. Like in high school, my thing was video games, sure. which is like some people like, can really like make a like living off of that and stuff. But to me, it wasn't, it just wasn't as satisfying. And like when I was in college, I was like that total, like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I'm lost type of phase. <laughs> so many people live that though. Like that, I think yes. that's really common. And I, I, you know, honestly, I think that was good for me just because if I had, I don't know if I, if I had known this was it, this was my passion all along without like having to go through like that phase, I, I think I'd be left wondering like, Oh, I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. You know? Mm. Yeah. That's, like, oh. that's smart. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I'm definitely more confident. And plus if I feel like if anyone were to put themselves on the internet like that, like the way I do, like if you see my pictures, like there's one with like ice cream all over my head and like, <laughs> burger stuff and you know <laughs> i've you seen the burger one yes <laughs> you can't really i i mean i'm just you know people enjoy it and i enjoy doing it and people yeah and i, I think i think you really can't i think people can see that i enjoy doing it yeah and i think that i think that helps 
That's smart. It's yeah, I can I can kind of almost tell just by talking to you now that yeah, it's kind of opened you up for that. It uh, it makes me wonder too. Like when you first came up with this idea, you talked about I think it was your father that you had mentioned about like you showed him some stuff. Um, but have friends and family uh, like always were they like totally supportive in the beginning, or maybe or did some of them be like you're gonna do what and you know, like how how did that kind of like start off? With, with uh, that, people. That, that's so funny you asked me that. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never... Okay, awesome. I'm excited to answer this question. Um, well, my, my family was super supportive of it. Like, I... Because I showed them everything, like, right when I would wake up to, like, the time I fell asleep, I was crocheting. I was like, look what I did. Look what I did. And they were like, <laughs> H- how? How did you do this? And they were just, like, so blown away. And I would bring my creations over to my friend's house. Everyone thought it was super cool. Like, everyone... Everyone... The support on my creations was awesome. It was completely rad. Like it was, it was neat for sure, and that's what really like kept me going. Well, not the only thing that kept me going, but it was really reassuring. But when it came to the business part, that's kind of where the support was mixed reviews on that one. Mm. Just because, because um, I had taken a year off of school for not not to just crochet, but for a, a number of other personal reasons. Sure. And but this just happened to fit really nicely. And, um, I, you know, I had told, like when I was starting to like go on the rise, like I had told people like, yeah, this is what I want to do and stuff. And I don't know, I had a lot of, I still get this question a lot. Like, Oh, well, what are you going to, what are you going to do? Like, when are you going to go back to school as in, well, like, what are you going to do after you're done with this? And I don't mm-hmm. think people get that. Well, I don't want to be done with this. <laughs> like this, <laughs> like what's your, what's your real career? Is that kind of like, a yeah, risk yeah pretty, pretty much. And you know, that over this course of this past year, because I've only been doing this for a year, it, it slowly it slowly started to fade. Like, oh, okay, you know, he, he's kind of serious about it, blah de blah But a lot of people still just saw me as like, oh, he just sits at home and crochets all day and he has a following. Like, what's he going to do with that, <laughs> I think? And I don't think, I don't think, I, I mean, I was with them too. Like, I don't think a lot of people see where there is a living when it comes to like handcrafted goods yeah, or crochet for that means. But yeah, when I tell people there's like actually a market, people are usually pretty surprised. <laughs> has, that, and, has that been easy to work through some of that questioning or has that been opposite of supportive? Like, like, has it been a driver? Has it been also something that makes you question it? Like how did, how did that work with, with what your motivation is? Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of people that could look at it in so many different ways. Like, you know how there's people that look at it as like, like I, I get driven when people hate on me, like the mm. haters drive me, blah, blah, blah. I, I personally would support, I would prefer all support. <laughs> I don't really, but, <laughs> I, but agree, I think, totally. <laughs> but I think it is nice that I, I have been able to kind of like persuade people like, Oh yeah, he's like actually serious about this. And my, my one year hook anniversary that just happened like two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. It's weird. When I posted that picture, like my account actually blew up off that, not blow up, but like I had like quite a rise in numbers that day. And I think a lot of people saw me as like, wow, he's been doing this. Like he's dedicated himself for an entire year without stray. I think he's like really into this. And I think people are seeing, because I've accomplished quite a bit, which I'm really proud of. Like I'm, I'm really proud of what I've done and everything. I think if people are starting to see that and like actually take me seriously, but but don't get me wrong, like the majority of people really do support me. But sure. I think a lot of people they do they do have that they did have that doubt. Yeah, I think that's probably natural for things that we don't understand. I, and I I totally get that because I can see. I mean, just from my perspective, I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy is like so much fun. Like you can see your pictures and like the peanut butter and jelly. That was my favorite. I think <laughs> just because I was like, I can't even imagine what that feels like. Um, but you like you're you're fun. You're silly about the stuff, but you're actually doing something that's really cool. And you are you could tell you're committed to it. So. Uh, that's why I was so yeah, I was curious about did people get it right away and it sounds like mostly but not really all the business so uh, it, well, it's I so cool I I don't completely blame them because on paper I if you look at it on paper oh he dropped out of school to crochet you yeah know? I mean, I could I could see where hesitation comes from that and I will admit I'm very 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 lucky in the position I'm in like I, I, I I'm able to find my niche and like work with it. Yeah. And so 
And about that peanut butter and jelly thing, really, honestly, my pictures, getting it on isn't so bad, but when you have to, like, shower and stuff, that's when it's disgusting. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, especially with that, like, I think it was, like, some burger in your face. I was like, oh, yes. no. Well, I- everyone's like, well, why don't you just wash it off? Like, why don't you, like, wipe it off before you get in the shower? But I don't think people understand how quickly I want to get it off my face. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like behind-the-scenes uh, magic. That's amazing. Yeah, but, I mean, but it really, I think everyone's taking me. But, uh, like, if I tell people... Um, in public, like if people are like, oh, what do you do? And I say, oh, I, I own a crochet business. I I don't generally think people take me seriously. <laughs> you, you, you need you to know. refer them to the crochet kids that I mentioned earlier to you uh, before this uh, conversation. And you'll be like, well, look at this. Um, and, right. it's, and it's amazing that you're striding something. Well, I want to fast forward a little bit to just recently you... Um, you and the hook nook, Jessica Carey, I think that's her name. Yes. Um, yes. You guys just started a charity drive, the Gracie Project. Would you describe what that is and what you guys are doing? Yes, I'd be more than happy to. Um, well, so what we're doing is uh, essentially because she she excels in like uh, crochet wear and like beanies and stuff. She does more like the clothing stuff. Mm-hmm. And I focus mainly I well, like only on the dolls for now. And so we were able to like kind of come together, and uh, so we're uh, we're collecting um, beanies and like mainly beanies and uh, stuffed dolls from not mainly beanies but like crochet wear, sure. like beanie wise, and uh, stuffed dolls that are handmade, and we're uh, collecting them until December sixteenth. And all the um, we have uh, uh, this children's hospital called OHSU Dornbecker or Dornbecker, yeah, Dornbecker's Children's Hospital. Mm-hmm. And we have a bunch of other ones like St. Jude's, St. Vincent's and stuff. And so what we're doing, we're like, we're uh, collecting them and we're going to be giving them all to um, the children in the hospitals and stuff. And uh, on Jessica's side, she knows someone personally and her, this little girl named Gracie, she um, has a form of cancer and she actually lost her left eye and she's currently fighting it right now, but we've dedicated it to her and her family. And so the dolls are going, the dolls and beanies are going to all the kids in the hospital in the oncology clinic, mm. but they're also going to be going to um, the siblings of kids with cancer as well if we get like an overflow because she was, because the like Gracie's siblings actually get kind of um, upset that, you know, Gra- like Gracie has the attention on her and she gets all the gifts because, you know, she's kind of like in a bad position. Right. And so it's we, a we, natural we, children kind of, right, you know, yeah. right. And, you know, these kids, like, almost get forgotten during the holiday. Not forgotten, but, you know, everyone likes attention on them. So we're also donating to to the families as well, so everyone gets, like, presents for their holiday season and stuff. Uh, First of all, that's amazing, and I love that you guys are doing that. When I read about what you guys were coming up with, I thought, "This this is so great. And it started to make me think when you were talking about, like, being taken seriously about a crochet business. So now, not only are you, like, if you found this spark for yourself, you have a business, and now you guys are doing this great charity. Like, uh, if anything, yeah. I, hopefully you guys even realize, like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Look at what you're doing. And I, uh, so anyways, I just, from this end, I just think you're so great for guys that are coming up with that. Well, thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate when people say it's amazing, because when I think about it, I'm not like, oh yeah, I'm such an amazing person. Oh yeah, I get a bunch of, like, credentials for doing this. I just think to myself, okay, I want to make these things for these kids, and I, I hope we get enough donations to like make them happy. So it's always nice to like hear a third person like saying, "Oh yeah, this yeah. is this is this is really cool," and it is really cool because I I um I, I had wanted to like donate last year when I just started, but you know that was pretty overwhelming for me because I was pretty slow at crochet. And now that I have a following, and she has like a, she has like an entire landmass following her. Wow! It, it's it's nice that we can like partner together and do this on a scale that I would have never dreamed of that I could do. Like we have people all over the the world that want to contribute and donate and stuff. And just her her Ravelry download about the cause. Like usually you're gonna download it if you're interested in donating, and we got over 500 downloads on it already. And and what are they downloading? Are they downloading patterns. No, no, they're just downloading about like uh, the information about it and like where they can send it to and mm, okay. what the re- what the re- what the requirements are. And like day five of like uh, five days after I announced it, I already got my first donation to my house. Wow. And people are people are just so excited about it. And I get Snapchats from friends on who are working on their Gracie project hats. And I'm like, yes, this is this is awesome. Like this is people because people, people want to help. 
people want to like make someone else's Christmas worth it. Was did you know Jessica before this, or did this kind of bring you guys closer together, or or form a new friendship? Um, Jessica and I have and I have been friends for quite some time because when I first started crocheting, she had just happened to like my picture, mm. and I saw that her thing was Portland, Oregon, and I was like. You know, I just started, I was like, and she had like 4,000 followers. I was like, oh my gosh, she's super pretty. So I, I, I wanted to talk to her. <laughs> and, and I, but I mean, she's married and kids and stuff. So we're just friends. But, you know, that was like my initial thing. But I don't know, we just, because we're so local together or next to each other, like, yeah. together. She was kind of like my mentor um, mm. uh, when doing this. I, I'm sure she doesn't, like, I, I never, I would call her senpai and stuff, you know, like the, if you know what senpai means, it's like, you know, master (laughs) and (laughs) it's like the anime. That's what they say in anime. But, um, yeah, I don't know. She's just, she's helped me so much throughout this entire crochet thing. And she's helped me with like business logistics and like, uh, ideas on how to market. And she's been so supportive of me. I think she's, I've been a really on it. Honestly, I've been so blessed, like have her be there for me. Like I, I jumped into the crochet scene at the perfect time to have her help me. And now that she is quite, you know, she's making such an impact in the crochet community and I'm like starting to rise up there. We've still been able to be like, a, like a, not just business acquaintances, but like actually friends. Yeah. Which has been great. And like I had come to her about the idea because I run my ideas by her just because, I don't know, I feel like she's wise. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had run the idea by her about the charity and then she was like, dude, I, I want to do that too. Like she had the idea of doing it as well, you know, under wraps and she had invited me to like partner up with her to do it. Cause we can like the reach is way better if we do it together. That's a great you know, way to collaborate. I, I was, I was going to ask how that kind of came to be. So that's, that's perfect. And I think it makes sense too. Like it's, you, gosh, how lucky are you to have um, like kind of a mentor in town um, you know, usually there's oh, like these, these people all over the world. So that sounds kind of amazing. So I'm, that's so funny. I think that like you said, um, this online, this influence, this connection, well, it's funny that it's, that's how you kind of started was being influenced by somebody else as well, you know, just by seeing her work. Yeah. And she's definitely one of my biggest inspirations just cause you know, it's kind of funny saying that about your friend, Yeah, but, but she, she really is like, she, cause she's also, she's also, she cares for two children, but she's so dedicated and she has such a work ethic and she's just, I uh, like, wow. You know, I, I want to be just like her. She's so cool. Like if anyone listening to this, check her out, the hook nook. And she's awesome. <laughs> those are the kind of the best people to have around us. You know, right. I, 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 um, now that you've been doing it for, I think this is a perfect segue into this because it just made me think about as you were talking about like, you know, she really kind of helped you out with like some businesses pieces and just as you were growing over this last year and even prior to that, um, I'm really curious, like what surprised you the most since starting to crochet and sharing your work online? Um, oh, geez, a lot. Um, it, it Ah, I don't know. I, I always kind of thought the internet was kind of a mean place <laughs> mm. because, you know, if you go on, you go on YouTube and stuff, but everyone was... on my Instagram has been so like, I'm beyond the moon about how nice people are and how supportive they are. And it's, it's crazy. Cause I, I, t- I try to respond to everything, but I don't, I don't really respond to my comments just cause there's so many of them. But I mean, I'll like message people behind the scenes and stuff. And if people message me, I always, I always message back. Like I've made that like a priority of mine. Yeah. And so it's, it, it's crazy that like, even if I don't respond and people like my picture, they, they see me every day for like this past year, people like think they know me, which is, I, which is great. I want them to like think that. And like people like care about me and they only know me from like this screen, you know? Yeah. Just cause they appreciate my art, which has been, so, and it's cool. Like I have a, and it's like surprising, like for this charity, they're sending, they're sending their homemade goods like this. I'm pretty much a stranger to them. And, you know, people are like trusting me and stuff. And it's, it's really just, oh my God, it fills my heart up just so much. It's, it's awesome. It's so great. And it's so great that people have been so supportive and nice. You're so right when you said, I thought the internet was mean. That's especially when you mentioned YouTube. I think that's where the mean people are at. <laughs> like, YouTube's so great, but oh my gosh, those comments, you can be vicious. I know. I like, know they are vicious. I'm like, uh. People, that's where I the know. haters live around YouTube. So sad that. 
So, <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about like who inspires you. Clearly, we know Jessica does. Is there anybody else in mm-hmm. life that's really kind of been, you know, like your support or or even people maybe that you don't know that inspire you online to do more or to like think about things differently? Um, well, I consider people that are supportive and people that are inspirational on two different things. Like, mm. you know, like I, I mean, just because you're supportive, I don't think you're necessarily like. Sure. Like maybe. you don't necessarily inspire me. I don't know if that's like mean to say, but that, that's just how I view it. Like I, they don't. I mean, they, they drive me to be better if like people support me for sure. Well, what about inspiration then? Is there anybody maybe that um, you look online or or people that are doing really yes. some cool stuff that like you're like they are so cool and so inspirational? Yes. Um, my well, because I've made quite a few friends on on the internet. Which is this has been awesome. I have all these friends all over like the states and stuff, which is really cool. Sure. Um, I have this. Do you want like specific names? Sure. I would. Yeah, I'd love to know like who like who do you look for for inspiration? Um. Well, uh, like my friend, uh, my friend Kara. She's at K Hook Creations. She she's up and rising, and I love her work. Oh my gosh, she's and she does the Twitch streaming, and she's just always working. Like, I, she does like the the goodbye August, hello September post, like, mm. and it, it shows what she's made. And she's made all these dolls that, like the entire month. And I'm like, how do you do it? <laughs> like I, you know, and she, she's really amazing. And my friends, uh, Heather Foster at Raz T crochet and, uh, Caroline, um, I, I Caroline Colart. I, we're all, they, I don't know. They're, they're definitely, they're still growing their accounts and stuff, but it's just so much fun seeing people like, they have a drive as well and they're still experimenting. And I was totally in that position as well. Mm-hmm. So when I see these people like wanting, like they, they just, I don't know. They like just, they don't, I just think anyway, the thing about crochet is people who crochet kind of inspire me just cause it's like such a, it's like an old granny type of thing to do <laughs> yet young, yet, yet young people are doing it. Sure. Yeah. Oh, totally. Absolutely. It's, it's interesting how it's really come back in this new way. It sounds like you guys yeah. are almost like you look at these inspiration. It's almost like you've guys, you've built a community. Kind of. I know I have people have said that because, well, I mean, and don't get me wrong. I have so many other inspirations. I'm just like, like when I go on my Instagram, I just see all these people and it's like, oh man, I, I wish my work was as good as yours. <laughs> uh, you know, and I have people in my immediate, my immediate uh, peer group as well. Like my best, one of my best friends, Sebastian, he's, He's, uh, wow. <laughs> like he, he's just, he's like, he's one of those guys who's just like a brainiac. I don't know how he does it. He's just too smart for me. <laughs> like he, he's definitely using his left hemisphere. Wait, the right hemisphere is the creative one, right? Yeah. Now all of a sudden I kind of forget, but yeah, sure. Let's go with that. I'm, yeah. I'm using my creative hemisphere and he uses his, like, he's all about the science and math and I don't know. He, he, he definitely inspires me and my, my roommate that I, I live with, he he that guy that guy hustles <laughs> and you know i see people and my friend he just moved over to new he just moved over to new york just to like pursue his photography um his name is aiden and my roommate's name is tyler but my, his name is aiden and he you know at 19 he he's like influential over in portland and he decided to make the step to go over to new york to you know chase his passion and i'm just like wow like at 19 i could have never dreamt of doing that I think it's kind of amazing. And it's funny because you mentioned your 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 best friend, um, Sebastian. Because um, I, I think he's the one that built that, um, the yarn nook for you, right? Yes, yes, See, yeah. I clearly, you know, I clearly have stalked you a lot. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's cool. He, you know, he <laughs> he's always been kind of like, when it comes to like gifts and stuff, he doesn't, he doesn't like, I'm, I'm like kind of like a really, I put like a lot of thought into gifts and stuff and he's always kind of been like, and eh, whatever about it. And then this past Christmas, he just like, like all these years of like not a whole lot of gifting. He gives me this amazing gift I've never received before. And it's like, you know, I see it every day and I, I swoon over it and well, it, well, it's you know, so cool. I bring it up because I think that's a perfect example of like, uh, even back to the support thing, like you know, that you can tell that you're very close with your friends and that they are all kind of leading great, you know, like they're really going after whatever, whatever they want to do, their passions. But then you get support with things like people give you things to help you along your journey. So that's why I brought it up because I thought it was kind of amazing. It was like a real 
proof and you know like that like <laughs> like not only are they kind of amazing people but people will show up in different ways and, right and, and they, yeah and like i have i had this group of friends who are also uh entrepreneurs they're starting their own leather handmade leather company and they live in portland but they're all straight from vietnam oh wow and you know they're they're all actually like international students and i'm like pretty good friends with them and they're just it's so funny to see people like they're in a whole new like place in this world and there's like well we want to start this and they're going after it (laughs) it, it's just so cool and they you know they i i honestly i love people that build me up like they you know they're pretty they're pretty funny about like they call me like like adjectives that are just they don't need to be said like they're always like calling me sexy and stuff and i'm just like (laughs) you guys stop it (laughs) you know it's, it's just so funny and they love seeing my work and stuff and yeah, it, and, so, it sounds like a lot of your friends not just it's it's funny because it, you're like that as well this entrepreneurial piece like a lot of like the people that you've connected with are like you're all supportive and helping each other and maybe in different ways but it just mm-hmm. it's like like you know like-minded people together like it's like you want the support you want but you also want to support other people so that sounds like um it almost sounds like a really good formula to have if you're going to start something on your own. Right. Yeah. And my other, uh, my other friend, him and I were, were like good friends in high school. His name is Jonathan Weiss. And he, you know, after high school, we kind of like, uh, grew apart just because of distance and stuff. And then I came back to town and I had my business and he had started a business and we just like, kind of like connected on that level. Mm -hmm. And he's been awesome. He actually just bought something for me. And it's awesome when my friends like don't expect like a discount. It's actually so, so rude to me when people like ask for like a discount, like a friend discount, Mm -hmm. just because it's like, why is my time not as valuable? But like people like him and others who like want to buy my stuff, like for full price and like support me that, that, and that really like inspires me. Like, okay, like my work is good enough that people want to buy and stuff. And they also see the value of like, you know, your time is you're doing this to try to earn money as well. And the living, of course you love it, but it, the, the point comes down to like, Hey, you, you guys want to support me in this way. Like in a financial right. way too. Well, well the, the money, I, I honestly, I don't really, I mean, I think about the money, but the money really isn't important to me. I only want the money just so I can stay home and keep doing it. <laughs> I don't want to have, <laughs> I, I, have to, I think that has how most people feel about the stuff they love. They, they want the money right. to keep doing what they love. I mean, the, the dream is just to be a stay-at-home dad for my corgi. That's kind of like what I'm <laughs> aiming for right now. <laughs> oh, that's kind of awesome. I think that's your new tagline. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of like what I'm aiming for. But I appreciate you saying the community thing because people have said that about the community because I've, I've been able to like do some community-driven things. Like I did a crochet along not too long ago where uh, a mood scarf so like every day we would all work on our mood scarves and at the end of it, we'd all post our pictures of it, which was really successful. Wow, that's great. And you know, there, you know, I don't, I don't get money for it or anything or like, I don't know. I think it's just like a nice, nice way to bring the community together. And right now I'm doing this crochet pass along, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to be, I have two groups of six people all over the States. I might, and I'll probably do an international one soon. But I'm sending this like blank canvas of a doll, mm-hmm. and then I send it to the first person, and then they add on a fe- they add on like a feature or two, and then they send it to the next person, and then they add on their own variation. That's and it goes wow. it goes in a full circuit, and it comes back to me, and I'm gonna have this like new doll that's never been made before, you know? Because Pokemon, they're not my original ideas; they're you know they've been made before, and I don't know. It's gonna be cool just having this doll that no one could expect to come to life. <laughs> I love that expansion of it. You know, yeah, and it's it's fun. As as we start to wrap up here, I you know you've given a lot of like different interesting ideas for advice and peace, but I always like to ask a, a couple advice questions of the guests. And the one thing I'm I'm thinking about is, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start something new like you? Um, well, first, the, my first advice is keep a day job, keep your day job for sure. <laughs> Just because, you know, it doesn't all come, the money doesn't come all pouring in right away. Mm-hmm. Um, but my, my, my real advice is, uh, if you, if you really feel strongly about it, like you have no reason not, like, even if it is just a hobby, like there's no reason not to do it. Like even if you're not blowing up on the internet or like having huge success, that shouldn't deter you from doing what you love. Like you, like why, why would any of like the materialistic things stop you from doing something that like you are excited about doing? And if you want to try something new, 
Like, who is that going to hurt? That's going to hurt absolutely nobody. So I say just go for it. I know that's a totally like Nike thing to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it's clearly I, working. I, I know people have said like just go for it, but I think if you like look at, I think it's weird saying look at me, but like you know, crochet is totally left field, and no one knew I was going to do it, and I'm not, I didn't even bring it up with anybody. But I think I think people people see the authenticity in your work, mm-hmm. and I think people I think the people can see the energy that you put into things. So. Yeah, I, I just yeah, I don't think anyone should stop you from doing what you want to do. I love that. Even, even if you even if you get even if you get a response that isn't so great for whatever reason, like you know, you're not you're not on this earth to please others. <laughs> like your your mini universe inside of you is just so big and overwhelming. That's what you should be, you know, trying to satisfy rather than make other people's mini universes happy. Mm, I I love the way that you refer to it as like your own inside, like this your own universe. Um, you're right. Like it's go after what makes you happy. Don't, don't really try to appeal to others. It's like, it, that's the right. authenticity that I think you even talk about as well. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like if I, I feel like if I had, if I had started this crochet just for the money, it, I, it would have gone a totally different route and I wouldn't have been as happy, but going at it as just something I wanted to do for my own sake, I think it's what really, you know, made me happy. Absolutely. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. You, you know, it's interesting. This sounds probably really lame for me to say this, but like you're like this young guy who's just started this, but you really do have some really wise advice because I think you're living it. That's the, that's the core of this. <laughs> like, you, like you're not just like, Oh, that's a great idea, but like you're really doing it and you're, you're being authentic. You're, you're not caring as much because you put peanut butter and jelly on your face, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, but you're having a fun time doing it. And I think you have some really wise advice in there and you're having a ton of fun. Oh my gosh. Yes. I am having a freaking hoot and a half. <laughs> I, and, I, and you never even said it specifically. I could just tell by the way you're talking. And that I think is really infectious. I love that you're doing all that. And it's like, and that's why I even reached out to you. because I was like, Oh my gosh, you, you just look like you're having such a great time and you're really trying something fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, it's funny, this past year has been like an absolute blast, but I have so many things on my horizon that mm-hmm. I, I that are under wraps that I am even more stoked. I didn't even know I could get more excited, but I am. <laughs> oh, that's great. And, We're all going to be, you know, watching to see what happens. Well, well, that actually is a perfect way that I usually like to wrap up the show and to say, where can people follow along or where should they follow along online for you? Uh, my biggest marketing place is Instagram, and from there you can branch out and find my uh, Etsy just through my website and my link and my bio. But if I were to give one thing, I would say my Instagram is my big hub. Great. And what's and, your what? And where do we find you on Instagram? What's your username? Uh, my handle is not bad. So K N O T period bad. So play on words. I know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. And your website is what specifically? It, it is a uh, www dot not bad. Uh, K N O T B A D uh, hyphen uh, crochet dot com. Great. So n- not bad crochet dot com with a hyphen. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely um, link to all of that and, and add it to our show notes and put it on the website and, and everywhere else. You know, Vincent, this has been re- super terrific. I have really enjoyed the conversation. Um, like you just have so much energy for this stuff and uh, but it's like it's great because i think there's so many people that are trying things and in it's what what i keep hearing out of this too is like don't be afraid to try it and try something new whatever it is just do it right yeah yeah and yes yes find find what you are passionate about and you know that this the happiness comes along with it that's that's a perfect way to lend leave this well vincent Mm -hmm. thanks so much i really appreciate all the time today well, thank you so much for having me. This has been so much fun. I Yes, <laughs> this has been awesome. I love it. <laughs> awesome. That's so great. Thanks. Yes, thank you so much. Now, over to you. Any thoughts or questions you'd like to share? Seriously, do you have any questions you'd like to ask me or the guests? We'll answer them and even get the guests to help us. So send us a message, use our Facebook page and email us there, or post a comment or question on the page, or tweet us at accidentalinfo using hashtag livingyourjourney. You can find out more about all the guests, links to their sites and social channels, and even bonus content all at accidentalinformation.com. Now, a couple favors. Go subscribe to the show and you'll be the first to get the download before everyone else. 
Also, take just a couple moments and head over to the show in iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a quick review. Quick, easy, and I would love it. This totally supports us and it helps me bring in interesting guests each week and keeps the show going. Also, I love to read them and see what you guys are really thinking. Thanks for joining the conversation. And remember, Living Your Journey is available every Tuesday. Until next week.